so the Lord urged me to go on and do a live video. It's the first live video I've ever done. And uh, it's April 8th in the morning here on the West Coast. It's 9.08 a.m. I just realized that it's a few minutes before 9.11 a.m. before the 11.17 eclipse here in the Pacific Standard Time in the morning. And uh, it's interesting because uh, I saw a video of um, Off the Curb, Joe Kirby, and he was saying that in Texas, they were actually in two months in advance making a prediction uh, for the April 8th for the weather that there was going to be dense cloud cover. And so I got up this morning and I, I went and I looked at the sunrise and literally there was dense cloud cover here on the west coast. So I'm not sure if there's dense cloud cover here happening um, all across America or what's happening, but it seems very prophetic. And so I just uh, want to do a, like a little Q&A, some uh, live prophecy, if you will. Um, I know the Lord says that when you're delivered up um, in front of judges that you trust on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you to what to say. And so I'm not worthy, but that's what I am praying for is that Ruach HaKadosh will lead and guide me on what to say. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters, especially the ones watching this video. And I pray against all uh, demonic interference. Um, there may be some people uh, online who uh, watch and they have nefarious purposes. Um, so the Lord rebuke those evil spirits. I forgive the people. Uh, I pray, you know, forgiveness is contingent upon future repentance. Um, that's why later on, it says that the Lord has written his children's names in his book of life. And the book of life, his name, your, your names were written in the book of life because he knew that you would eventually come to him. And so there are some who would not repent and come to the Lord. And those are the people who have not had their names written in the book of life. And it's sad, but a lot of these people, they are surplanting the church, and in the church is the body of Christ. It's the literal spiritual third temple before the physical third temple in Israel. And that third temple is going to be that of the false messiah. Now, the physical temple right now, the third physical temple, the body of Christ, is being surplanted with nefarious, um, so let's just say, concoctions that are being placed into people's bloodstreams. And it is a seven-step process, if you go and see that video on my channel, the seven-step process of the body of uh, the church, the false church. Um, every single successive step in that the people would it would be harder for the person to repent let's just say that like um, the ten plagues of Egypt um, every single one the Lord had people's hearts hardened and so they weren't able to repent because the Lord said hey you know I'm bringing judgment upon Egypt and this is literally going to cause a separation process, like the wheat and the chaff. So every single time a plague happened, Pharaoh was like, no, you know, like Rumpelstiltskin, if you will. And then when the plague happened, they uh, were upset and they didn't want it to happen anymore. And so they were like, well, make, make it go away kind of thing. All right, you know, fine. And then right after, uh, the Lord just let them be to their own uh, uh, wants and desires and well, they changed their mind because without the Lord, you, you can't, you know, accept him. You can't really love. You can't be happy, if you will. You can't love others without the Lord's love. He provided everything around us. And so that's the reason why um, with Joseph and Pharaoh, with uh, uh, Genesis um, and Pharaoh's dream with the seven fat cows and the seven skinny cows, and then the seven skinny cows eating the seven fat cows, 
Joseph said, hey, you know, this is prophetic of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. you got to prepare for it. And in preparing for it, they took all the grain and they stockpiled it. And so Egypt uh, became, uh, you know, the superpower, if you will. And they stored up judgment for themselves because they wouldn't repent. And so this eclipse that is going to be happening in the afternoon on the east coast or morning on the west coast is prophetic of America not repenting and as they say X marks the spot and um, what's interesting is in Illinois uh, it's going to be passing over a town called Little Egypt which is quite prophetic and then it's going to be going over the west coast over um, the Niagara Falls east coast sorry over Niagara Falls and at Niagara Falls, there's literally an island there called Goat Island. Why would they name an island after a goat with a waterfall, okay? So the Lord has shown me that almost every single physical thing is spiritual. And a lot of people, they just kind of write it off as happenstance, you know, just circumstance, if you will. But the enemy has a plan and the Lord has a plan. And the Lord's plan is for salvation, and the enemy's plan is for destruction. And the kingdom of darkness, they are literally getting what they want uh, because they possess people. They are living for two different things. It's a twofold spirit, if you will. It's pleasure and then destruction because it's a love hate relationship, like black and white, like their false duality being good and bad without Christ no salvation um, because they wanted what they wanted they fell and made their decision and then God within the book of Enoch it says that um, the righteous scribe um, went and asked God to intercede for the fallen angels and he the Lord said nope you're not coming back sorry it's uh, done and I'm not you know so they broke their trust between the Lord they broke love and so they denied love and the Lord knew that they wouldn't repent, and they had literally gone against him, knowing full well what they were doing. They made mutual imprecations, and they decided, oh, you know, if we're going to do this thing, you know, so they fell. And what's interesting is, in 1833, there was a day, the day that the stars fell, and I had this person on my channel and they had commented about this devil ice comet and they were talking about how it uh, connects with iPad Go 2 and how it's like the, the serpent's tail literally, you know, swing, you know, his tail and having uh, a third of the heavens fall. But it seems as if revelation happened. Uh, it's kind of has many different meanings at one time. So there's a lot of things that kind of overlap, if you will, but in different times, but at the same time, if it's a prophecy. So just like there are, um, the anti spirit of the Antichrist entered the world with um, the Lord's crucifixion, uh, which Paul was speaking about, the crucifixion happened and then the spirit of the antichrist entered the world so there's been many different antichrists in the world but this is before the one final true antichrist and what's interesting is there's seven heads and ten horns and the papacy has had seven heads and then uh, back when uh, the angel was speaking uh, he said that there's been five rulers or something like that, and then there's a sixth to come, and then um, there's going to be more rulers to come after that. And the last head of the papacy would be the little horn. It's boastful. And everything is connected spiritually, and the enemy has a game plan. They, they try to make their own foundation based on Christ's firm foundation. And then they stick to that plan, they stick to that plan, and they try and make it manifest the way they want. And 
a lot of people have this feeling of deja vu and it's actually the spirits that are trying to make you follow their route their their game plan if you will their their planned train tracks like the holocaust and this morning i was actually uh, uh getting ready and i felt like a, a little prick on my forehead right here and i found out there was a uh, a pimple and it popped and there was some blood and so I washed it off and I'm like hmm, this is interesting it seems like a you know the head wound kind of thing you know like a, a little horn if you will uh, it seems prophetic like the little horn might be getting a head wound here soon and then the Lord showed me that America literally the, all the states with the border it looks like an elephant with uh, you know the trunk you know over on the east coast and then on the west coast would be the tail end if you will and you know, driving around there's a lot of prophetic things happening it seems as if April 8th um, is going to be uh, basically judgment eclipse um, they mean judgment upon America and We'll see what happens. A little while ago, I had a like an open day vision of a whole bunch of golden swords with different uh, angelic words, angelic scribes falling down on America, and they pierced tons of buildings. And as I was driving, uh, one of the swords literally pierced the hood of my car and like pinned me down on the ground. I'm like, it looks like you know I am going to be judged with America. I'm not sure what that really prophetically meant, but it seems as if God's sword of judgment is going to come down upon America. But there's a brother in Christ also, um, Brother Sean at uh, Schnickers123, he also said he had a prophetic dream of being in an apartment and or a building and uh, judgment came upon America and all these things bad were happening around the, the area and the person inside was being protected by large angels and he said that there was some uh, like angelic words spoken and uh, they were uh, miraculously protected and so the Lord will protect his children especially those who are left behind and they will not have to be um, partake in you know, the censers and the bowls and um, those judgments, if you will, like part of the 144,000, you know, the, the scattered remnant around the world. And I just got to go uh, get some gas here real quick. I'll be right back. You know, it's interesting. The Lord showed me that when we trust in Him and have faith, we're living upon faith, and that's what we live upon, the Lord's Spirit. And when the Lord's Spirit moves, then the physical reality moves with it. Spirit is more real than the physical reality. And if we don't put fill ourselves with the right uh, fuel, spirit, we don't run properly. So if you try to put some other kind of thing uh, in it doesn't run properly.
Hey, Pink Pluto, how's it going? I pray your morning's going well or afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Yeah, the Lord led me to uh, just do a live video and so I'm being obedient to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I thought I'd take this time this morning to just talk about what the Lord wants me to speak about and prayer for you know my brothers and sisters that kind of reminds me of Tim Henderson doing uh, his uh, pastor uh, videos in the morning yep ready for the eclipse and the Lord has been working miracles let's just say that around um, what's interesting is I am on the West Coast and in 2017 was the time when I actually, the, I, I was still living in sin. The Lord hadn't saved me. I still had um, 18, 19, 20, 21, four more years to go before the Lord would lead me to open up the Bible and actually download the Bible app and actually start reading the Bible. And I was at the eclipse um, just north of Salem, Oregon, in Eugene, when the 2017 eclipse went over America, okay? So I was looking, and I was watching. Oh, there's a little gnat in here. Come on, little gnat. Oh, oh, come here. Oh, that reminds me of, you know, the Pharisees, you know, uh, trying to uh, filter out a gnat out of their cups. Maybe if I air out the car. And so, yeah, I was at the eclipse um, in 2017, and then I was taken down to southern Oregon, like uh, down in sin, and I had to file bankruptcy in 2017, and my bankruptcy, my file 7, chapter 7, bankruptcy, lasts 10 years, so that would end in 2027, and that seems kind of prophetic, but so four years after that, I uh, finally came to the Bible, and I opened it up, and I, the Lord was like, you know, download the Bible app. You know, I was uh, had to file bankruptcy, I was in a travel trailer full of mold, my girlfriend left me because I was unfaithful, and I was uh, kind of a, a little bit of an alcoholic, if you will, and um, so, yeah, a lot of people don't know, but... Um, I never really told a lot of people this. I'm not sure if I put it in my videos, but one time I was led by evil spirits because I was just in such a negative mood uh, because of the evil spirits to chug almost a whole bottle of Sailor Jerry's rum and I almost died. And so he had me puke it out. Thankfully, the Lord saved me. Um, but, you know, uh, self-harm isn't the best thing and the Lord saved me from that. So I praise the Lord, bring, uh, you know, bringing me to sobriety. Um, he says for us to be of a sober mind and a sober heart and to be of one accord. And, you know, we have to, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And there's a lot of people who are, you know, being brought to the Lord and they, it's literally salvation is today, not tomorrow. So you have to repent in the moment. And a lot of people, they are still living with the sin nature. So they're struggling, you know, if they accept the Lord. But the Lord will be faithful as long as you resist the enemy, he shall flee. So a lot of times I'm resisting the enemy with these certain spirits of temptation. And, you know, I'm really physically struggling. I can't really do anything with myself. And then I ask the Lord, you know, please, you know, save me. And a lot of times there's actually some requirements the Lord wants you to do to, you know, be faithful. Um, and sometimes you have to be faithful and sometimes that takes time as well. And then all of a sudden the spirit's gone and also I'm like, what? I'm not feeling this anymore. Like, thank you, Lord. You know, finally you delivered me from this. And so a lot of people, they think, you know, okay, you know, I accept the Lord. Once saved, always saved. And they're, it's like they're being placated, if you will. And they think, oh, you know, I'm saved. You know, I can keep on doing what I want. It's, I'm, I'm cool, but no, not cool. You got to, you know, have faith and, you know, keep the faith until the day of your death or the rapture or whichever comes first. Or if the rapture does happen, don't lose faith, 
okay? You got to, you know, even if the Lord isn't with you, uh, you know, with a feeling, he's still with you. He's still around, you know, no matter where you are, even if you're in heaven or hell, the Lord is there. So, um, a lot of people, they've made the bad, bad choice and they died and they go to hell, but then the Lord brings them right back because they're like, you know, please, you know, I, I submit, I am wrong, please forgive me, uh, I want a second chance kind of thing. And so, like Dean Braxton, he died, went to heaven, and then came back. And, and it's interesting. Yeah, just reading your little comments here. Alabama for the eclipse, but was still in high school. This time I won't have the. You know, the eclipse is going to happen in a certain amount all across the United States. So there's the umbra and penumbra. I actually posted a video of um, uh, Anthony Bear. He posted 9 a.m this morning and he says that you know the eclipse in perspective but over on the west coast so uh at 11 7, 11 17 a.m this morning on the west coast uh there's going to be a tiny sliver on the bottom of the the sun um with the shadow and he says you know is it actually the moon because nobody sees the moon traveling in front of the sun so it might be just actually the sun's uh the moon's shadow <laughs> uh it's interesting, but yeah, uh, you can see the uh, the eclipse not not just in totality, but it's going to be uh, casting its shadow, if you will, all across North America. So even if you think you missed it, it probably didn't. So um, Alabama, hmm. it reminds me of Sweet Home Alabama, uh, and uh, you know the the birds and the bees of that song and. Forget the uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, hmm. But yeah, I actually was part of. Uh, I saw the eclipse in 2023 from Southern Oregon, and I watched it, and it was like a partial eclipse. But you know, I couldn't see it with uh, my uh, just regular eyes, so I, I used those sunglasses, and I saw you know it was partial um, too. So. Uh, yeah, I was in the direct line of the totality of the 2017 eclipse, and as it was going over, uh, it literally felt super cold. And I found out that the moon emits a cold laser light, which actually kind of cancels out infrared radiation, because at night, when the moon's shadow is cast, infrared radiation coming up from the Earth in the shadow is actually warmer than in the moonlight. So the moonlight's colder at night than the the moonlight shadow, which it shouldn't be that way. It should be warmer in the moon's light than in a shadow uh, when the moon is having its light being cast upon. So that's interesting. Oh yeah, I've been driving for uh, eight, eight and a half, nine years. Uh, and I'm a professional driver, so I literally have uh, an app running and I have to, you know, watch and uh, like kind of look back but uh, this actually I can watch the road more than um, actually uh, looking at the screen yep I pray against uh, all the evil spiritual oppression and the resistance um, you know because we're all struggling literally a lot of people think that um, you know oh well he's a false prophet and he's a wolf because he said something wrong but if you look on my channel almost every single time I found that I've said something wrong I go back and I'm like whoa 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 sorry you know I think the enemy infiltrated and I was led astray and I'm sorry please forgive me I said a lie and I was you know I was led to believe a lie and I repent and so you know I, I try and correct myself I'm not perfect you know a lot of people um, they all of a sudden you know they lose their temper or they get upset and an evil spirit you know the anger gives a foothold to the devil and all of a sudden it's like Ah, you know, they get upset and, you know, it's like something overtakes them, you know. Like one time, um, the spirit of anger overtook me and I actually lost one of my jobs. And so, you know, is I found a lot of times when you get upset or I get upset, 
It's actually when I'm trying to be faithful and uh, the Lord is trying to lead me to do something prophetically um, as a child of God and a servant of God, prophetically as a, a prophet, the enemies resist that and they try and project their anger upon me. And so they try and make you feel what they're feeling. And a lot of times when I've been making videos, they try and you know take over my body and I have to rebuke them like the Lord rebuke you. Um, just like any other spiritual warfare and like some you know brothers and sisters in Christ all of a sudden they feel like there's some kind of pain or some kind of like weird you know thing happening all of a sudden like their uh, chest constriction and they're like <coughs> <coughs> you know and so they have to rebuke it in the Lord's name and the evil spirits run away right the, the evil spirits always try to make you question yourself. Um, even if there's some people who are living their life and, you know, they're going around and um, they go into a church and they thought everything was fine. They were acting themselves and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes upon and the person uh, who was going to get baptized, you know, at that time they were acting normal and all of a sudden the evil spirits well up and it's like... Um, that movie Alien, okay, Alien and the Predator, okay, you got that, uh, you know, um, you know, the person, the alien, right? And all of a sudden the second mouth comes out and it's like, <sighs> right? So uh, just like the Lord has a double-edged sword which comes out of his mouth, okay, if you are not delivered and you haven't fully repented and you haven't been baptized, then these evil spirits come up and they're like, <sighs> okay, so a lot of times, um, like when Stephen addressed the Sanhedrin, he said, why do you resist the Holy Spirit? And he said this whole monologue, okay, of, you know, everything that happened and how they should actually be repenting and believing in Christ. But they got so mad that they started gnashing their teeth and then they took Stephen out and they stoned him to death. And then he looked up and he saw the Lord's Holy Spirit and he was stoned, okay, but... Um, a lot of people are afraid of death, but when you're in the Lord, just as Dean Braxton said, that you, you won't feel the sting of death. And a lot of people might be afraid, like, oh, you know, what if they torture me and stuff like that? Well, I have faith that he would deliver you from any pain. A lot of times when um, Antipas was martyred, um, in the city of the devil, he... Um, was put into a burning bowl and he was literally praying at that time so I, I have faith that the Lord kept him from the pain and then he all of a sudden just went silent because the Lord took his soul took his spirit and he was delivered from that pain of death um, so even if you know you're left behind I, I pray I'm not, I, I pray you know for everyone I, I've seen a lot of you know people uh, pastors and preachers um, they say a lot of stuff prophetically, but um, oh, I forget which person was it. Um, I saw one channel and he was talking about how uh, we were not. Um, oh, yeah, how Christ would say, uh, get away from me. I never knew you. But the Holy Spirit told me that this person literally has been speaking a lot of lies on his channel and he actually might be left behind. And so the Lord might say, you know, get away. I never knew you. There's a lot of people who preach the word, but they're not actually anointed. They're, they're not, they, they mean well, but they're not anointed and the Lord hasn't called them. So we have to be faithful and true to the Lord to see what he wants to do with us. So a lot of people, they are very, um, you know, like, oh, oh, pick me, pick me, pick me, kind of thing. But um, you just have to be faithful and wait. And sometimes, you know, the, the body of Christ has a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, people in it. And me personally, the Lord has shown me uh, all the lies and all the negative stuff. And I've actually had some people um, uh, talk about, oh, well, don't talk about any negative stuff. Uh, you should actually, you know, just be happy, you know, uh, you know, preach the gospel, you know, salvation, uh, John 3, 16. Uh, but the Lord actually wants us to, you know, prophesy and stuff like that and, you know, be faithful. And there's a lot of people who um, just aren't called, they're not elected, 
and you know they mean well but they're actually you know the enemy is having a, a heyday if you will like chaff trying to make them chaff like putting a sock in their mouth like uh, you know they're saying a lot of stuff like God forbid Catherine Kerr having people bow down to her like the statue of Nebuchadnezzar uh, complete heresy uh, there's a lot of people um, uh, trying to think um, the beat with Alan Parr what's interesting is like um, a lot of these people I see like uh, I just saw this uh, channel called Buddy Brown a lot of people they get on and they're acting it's literally like a spirit come upon them and they act like, oh, yes, very animated and they're very positive and all this stuff. And it's like, whoa, it's like it's like a spirit has come upon them and they're putting up a false persona, a false front. And me, myself, I've tried to do my best to not put up a false front, a false persona, um, tried to, um, you know, speak through the spirit of truth. And yeah, I just try my best. But yeah, I was uh, in the eclipse on the west coast and those two eclipses kind of intersected so it was like um a v you know alef tov and there's um the split from on the west coast in oregon northern oregon where i live they split and they went down one uh, like uh north florida uh, 2023 like south like texas and the other over um in through like uh, uh, Alabama and then this one is going to cut through Texas and up through like Maine and and um, Niagara Falls um, up through and I actually looked at a map of FE okay FE map and it was looking you know like circle like the NATO map and it had all these different eclipses uh, mapped out and it showed this one eclipse that's happening April 8th it's going to travel up through Texas and then it's going to go up through Maine and like the the trunk of America like you know like uh, Aladdin and you know Ali Babwa like Ali is stands for um, Al Aladdin like Al um, and Bob stands for Bob haircut like um, uh, the Amish so the Bob haircut literally when they do the Bob haircut it represents the dome the head is the dome, okay? The firmament, okay? Just like Disney's magic, the firmament, the star going up and then down, okay? Just like all those, you know, rockets, they shoot them up and they go down into the Bermuda Triangle. The Triangle Three, Unholy Trinity. A lot of weird stuff happens. Um, uh, but it's gonna go up and through, and then it's gonna travel up through um, the ocean, okay, the Atlantic Ocean like um, at the lost city of Atlantis, Atlantic Ocean. Okay, it's gonna go up through Northern Africa and then it's gonna cut through the Red Sea. And uh, they actually cut off the map and they make you think that it's gonna stop around you know, the Atlantic Ocean, but it's not, it goes all the way around. And I, so I have that photo in my community post. And so it reminds me, uh, cause it's cutting through uh, Texas, up through New York with Niagara Falls nearing the end of it with Maine. Um, yeah, way too many synchronizations, literally. Well, me personally, my my apartment complex uh, is not uh, conducive uh, for doing that, and me driving. I'm I'm a, a taxi cab driver, so you know I got to work as well. Um, so it's just extra off time that I have. That's the reason why. So how do I receive prophecies? Well, we are all led by the Holy Spirit to do certain things at certain times. And the Lord, um, sometimes there's a false um, spirit of prophecy, like the false um, evil spirits trying to make false prophecy and manifest it. And then there's the Lord's spirit who tries to manifest those things. And so uh, I know in the end times there's going to be a lot of um, lying signs and wonders. And, you know, I pray against that. And so uh, me personally, through my mind, thinking like worrying, um, I was thinking, well, what if, you know, I got the, the nose, do, <clears throat> nose doohickey 
and uh, I've been being led astray this whole time. <clears throat> and what if the enemy has been having me do, you know, all these things on different prophetic dates because they know the dates and then they're trying to make me think that I'm just this, you know, oh, you know. Um, but it seems as if there's been way too many things. The Lord has had me, you know, put down all the different dates and all this stuff. And he literally, I was led after being baptized, or actually right before being baptized, <clears throat> to go up an ancient volcanic mountain. And it was called um, Table Rock. Table Rock Mountain, okay? Ancient volcanic Table Rock, like Psalms 23, 5. I behold, behold, I prepare a table before your enemies. And on that day, I was brought up, and it was just random. I was like, all right, you know, I'm getting this feeling. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, you know what? I feel, like, alive, more alive than I ever felt. And I was led to do this, and so I literally went up there. I provided a an offering, and um, in hindsight, I found out that it was actually the wrong offering. The I was led to um, bring like fruits, like a blood orange, a pear, and an eggplant, and then I was uh, led to put like rocks in a circle, and then a stick, and then I had a necklace. See my my past persona, the lying persona that the enemy had me embody before I was saved was a honey badger. And uh, there was this video online called a the Crazy Nasty A Honey Badger, and it was uh, a YouTube channel, this guy called Randall, he was gay, and he uh, did a commentary about the honey badger. And uh, it was kind of like a false persona, a false front of fierceness, because honey badgers fight lions. And um, they're like fearless, basically. And so um, they have two stripes. And so I was like led to put two blonde stripes and anything like unnatural isn't, you know, the Lord. And so I put on this false first persona of um, like pompousness, if you will. And I had a necklace made of silver with a honey badger on it. And so I was led to uh, like in um, the Old Testament, make a circle of rocks unchiseled and make an offering, but I, I, I was led to, you know, make an offering. Uh, there's this uh, comedian called Joe Rogan, and he said that there was children playing with leaves or whatever, and all of a sudden Johnny broke a leg, and then, you know, one of the children is like, what do we do? His leg is broken. Go, go get some leaves. I literally didn't know what to do back then because I was a young greenhorn Christian, and I wasn't totally fully saved, and the Lord has been bringing me out of Mystery Babylon this entire time. And I mean, a lot of people think that one and done, you're baptized, you're immediately delivered, everything is done, you're a new person. But a lot of times these evil, you know, spirits, they try and persist upon you. Um, uh, and they, they, like, familial and familiar spirits, they try and stay with you, and then they, you know, they're delivered, and then they find high and dry places... And then they try and find seven worse spirits and demons that are coming upon you. A lot of people, you know, they, they're, you know, they constantly keep tripping up as Christians. And this evil spirits, they're getting in themselves into temptation. And the Lord will never tempt you more than you can handle. And so you're literally, when you give into the temptation, it's, uh, you could have repented. You could have said, you know, I can actually, uh, 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 you know, take my attention somewhere else instead of giving into this. And so the seven worse spirits come in. And so... A lot of Christians, they're still eating pork, bacon, they're, you know, uh, living, you know, they're watching pornography, uh, they're, you know, just like, they might have a wife, but they may be looking at other women still, instead of being faithful, you know, in their mind, they're thinking, you know, oh, I'm not you going and being a fornicator, but they're, it's their heart. The Lord is always looking for your heart if you're willing, he searches a man's heart, and women's hearts, and... He's looking for people who are actually willing. And those people who are actually willing are the ones who will be written in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life or, or already because the Lord knew that they would choose, choose him. So a lot of people, they're living in sin, and the Lord is chastising them constantly. This is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to be constantly chastised for giving into temptation and sin instead of repenting and staying in repentance. So when you stay in repentance... The Lord can utilize you how he wants. This is why the Israelites 
went through the desert for 40 years. They literally kept on being chastised by the Lord. So at, in the end, the, the, the people who were faithful and those lines and generations, they were able to cross over to the Jordan. Okay, but Moses, he stayed behind because, uh, you know, prophetically, um, he had, you know, questioned the Lord sometimes. He actually, he, um, the Lord was about to kill Moses in the beginning because he didn't, um, he wasn't circumcised according to the Old Testament. And so God literally struck him with the plague and he was about to die. And so his wife came and cut off his um, uh, foreskin and then the Lord um was abated, was uh, pleased with this because the Lord wants us to be faithful, which through faith, like Abraham, which is pleasing to him. So a lot of people, they do things by faith and a lot of people think, you know, the Bible is a finished work. And, you know, the Lord actually is the only one who can do something new. So we have to have wisdom, knowledge, and discernment whether or not it's the enemy trying to do a mod podge mixture of something old uh, in order to make it look like it's something new, or if the Lord is actually doing something new. Um, uh, the, usually the things that are new are the things that he planned way beforehand, and then now they're just coming into Revelation. And so people are being woken up, and they're like, oh, you know, you know, a lot of, you know, prophets, they say prophecy, and then a lot of people are like, oh, no, that doesn't mean anything, you know, that's not going to happen. And then later on, it happens. And then people realize, oh, a prophet was really among us. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, judge not lest ye be judged. Yep. Um, you know, I. the Lord wants us to embody the Lord's Prayer, okay? Our sovereign Father who made heaven and earth, hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name. Hallowed is like the enemy's version of hallowed is... Uh, all Hallows Eve, all right? They hollow out a pumpkin and carve a face. You literally like, um, you know, the face paint, you know, like uh, the black and white face paint, you know, duality. That's why um, like Led Zeppelin, um, Gene Simmons, you know, black and white kind of thing. Um, false duality, good and bad without Christ, rock and roll, like throwing a rock. Who first, who threw the first rock? Well, Elvis did. He was, that was the birthplace of rock and roll in Tennessee. And tennis... C, like ball games, and C, like, yeah. Um, so, and then there's Nashville, Tennessee, like weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, yeah, but a lot of people are still living in sin, and they are being chastised. And they, they're per, still partaking in of mystery of Babylon. And the Lord said, come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sins. And a lot of people would be eating and drinking until the last days, um, up until the moment of the rapture. And the Lord said, if you're not watching actively and you're not actively staying in repentance, then you, you know, the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And, you know, the night is going to be the great and terrible day of the Lord. And... Night or kind of reminds me of an eclipse, you know, night during the day, like the day being consumed by the night. Um, it's like a switch, if you will. I know the Lord, when he was crucified, uh, there was an eclipse that wasn't supposed to happen. That did happen. And me personally, I was looking at this FE map and it had all these different eclipses and I saw one that wasn't there that they that had been there and i think it was uh, one that was actually over uh, america i think one of them i think the 2023 one um possibly might not have been supposed to have been there but it happened um yeah i just i don't know maybe they just didn't include it in there that was just a supposition um but you know the eclipse is going to happen um eight eight minutes it's 9 53 right now so an hour and an hour and 24 minutes at 11 17 a.m pacific standard time and yeah no prob god bless kind of reminds me of pluto um pluto like 
Plutarch, like um, uh, the Hunger Games, um, there was, uh, like Pluto, they kept on saying that it's a, a planet of ice, but a lot of people don't know that plan ets, like plan ETs, like plan the extraterrestrial lie, um, they're not round floating in space. We're not just round, you know, ball on a ball, bale, floating in space is meaningless specks. The enemy tries to displant um, the meaning, the Lord's creation, so tries to make us think that we're meaningless, specks floating in space like ants, and we have no purpose, no meaning, and a lot of people, they're trying to find meaning in their life, and they haven't found the Lord, and the meaning is love. We literally love one another like the Lord has loved us, and, you know, we love one another with what the Lord provides, and then all he wants is some reciprocation, literally love him back. And so, you know, people who don't love him back and they continue um, you know, living like the fallen angels, uh, they... The Lord gives us meaning, and a lot of people think that individuality is meaning. Like, I have to be, you know, I have to be, you know, a personality. But a lot of people who put up a personality are a false front, and they're being possessed by fallen angels and evil spirits. And so they make them think, you know, I have to wear certain jewelry, I have to wear a certain fat, I have to wear certain clothes. You know, life is more than just clothes and food. But a lot of people, they think, you know, well, I'm me, I'm separate, I'm special, I'm individual, like, celebrate myself, you know, that's why where birthdays come from. So, birthdays have a prophetic meaning, and then what they did was, they bake a cake, like the baker and the butler, and then they put on a whole bunch of candles, and they put one candle, and then two candles, and then three candles, okay, so, uh, when the baby's born, and they light the, the candles, and then they blow out the candles, like Hanukkah, like blowing out the candles, okay, and they, it's when, um, the uh, uh, egg is fertilized, there's light that's taken away, and then the cells start to divide, and then they, um, literally, that's the beginning of cell death, I mean, you know, you're, you grow, and then you, um, reach homeostasis for a while, and then you start to decline, and you start to age, and, um, so these candle cake rituals are literally a ritual of self-worship. So that's one of the most holy times, unholy, to the Satanists, is self-worship. You, you bake a cake, you cover it in frosting, and then you put on a whole bunch of candles, and then you blow them out. It, it's a ritual. It's literally blowing out your life. Literally all these different candles before... So, yeah. Yeah, with the firmament, yep. So the firmament, if you look, there's actually a channel called F.E. Banjo, and I have them tagged in my community posts, but he says that there are a certain amount of flights that are literally impossible. There was a flight um, from... New York to Hawaii, and Hawaii is at a lower latitude, so it does a cross over the United States. Hmm, kind of reminds me of a plane flight in the eclipse, okay? So you fly from the east coast to the west coast into the ocean, okay? So it kind of follows that same eclipse pattern, all right? So on the FE, if you take a, um, a pinpoint, you know, a string from New York to Hawaii, it does a diagonal of the United States. And uh, there was a plane flight that was flying and it was supposedly over uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. And it had to make an emergency landing because somebody had to give birth. And Salt Lake City, Utah um, is quite a distance away from Seattle, Washington. And so they had to make an emergency landing and they landed in Seattle, Washington in like 15 minutes. That's physically impossible if they were over Salt Lake City, Utah. And if they were over Salt Lake City, Utah, they would have just landed there. So they're lying about the flight paths. And so the eclipse paths are the true, the true paths. Um, but if you take a string from New York to Hawaii on an FE map, it actually goes straight over Seattle, Washington. And where was Seattle, Washington? A, a, a woman giving birth, okay, like the birth pains, all right? So it's just like the Seattle Space Needle where Elvis did a um, show called um, It Happened at the World's Fair. So 
Pat Spurry for Pettick. And just like Dean Braxton, like Braxton Hicks, like the birth pains uh, with his testimony of going to heaven. And he talks about like, forgive and be forgiven. And a lot of people, they've done bad things in their life and that was in their past. And as as long as, you know, they're on their journey, like journey, the, you know, the, the band, all right? It's where they get that, you know, the journey, the, the path, the way, the straight and narrow path um, towards repentance and unto salvation, um, you know, being faithful unto your death or the day of the rapture. And that's what the Lord is looking for. So uh, I was actually watching a channel called uh, Jew Rassic Liars, and he had been talking about um, Elvis and how it uh, connects to um, Tennessee. And um, what's interesting is there was a uh, uh, Louisiana hayride um, in, uh, I think it was Louisiana, um, and the hayride reminds me of wheat and chaff and the chaff would be burned and um that's in 1956 that was the first time they had said that um elvis has left the building and uh in i pick goat 2 there's literally a uh ritual where they have a child uh, a girl uh, holding an apple and so the apple represents the big apple and the the woman the virgin okay like the unholy bride uh, the apple, she falls asleep, okay, and the apple rolls over, and then it splits in half, and so that's, you know, black-white kind of thing, um, and what's interesting is an apple, you know, split in half, kind of forms a, a W, uh, like, world, and then the two seeds, they come together, and then there's a lily, and uh, I remember watching a video, it was talking about a bad dawn, and when he went to visit the papacy, there was a, a board game, a checkers board game. It looked like, you know, black and white checkers. And right in front of it were lily seeds. And so there was like, lilies actually, they are a aquatic uh, based plant. And when they are unchecked, they literally grow up and they have a whole bunch of spikes on them. And then their, their leaves unfold and they literally crush and pierce everything around them. And so this lily, uh, when the last Trump went to visit um, the papal or papacy head uh, to make an agreement with them, uh, there is the lily. And so it kind of represents the Antichrist lily uh, with the man of sin and choking out the waters of life. So that's what that means is the, the lily. And so the lily sprouts from the apple, the big apple. So you have two sides that are split, they, the two, you know, fall down, okay, like London bridges, you know, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Um, and so like uh, the uh, monarchy and the secret monarchy society infiltrated the US, US, the United States. Uh, the first state in America was Delaware, like Dell, like Dell computers, like EL. Uh, like all the angels' names end in E-L, so they want the E-L to be E-L. E-L equals God to them, and like the beginning and the end. Um, uh, they infiltrated uh, through the Boston Tea Party. You know, that's why they had the Boston Tea Party. They threw a whole bunch of tea out of boats. The boats represent the Ark, Noah's Ark. And the tea went into the ocean, okay? Like a, the, the sea, the holy sea, the papacy, okay? So... The papacy, uh, working with the monarchy uh, to infiltrate the USA. And then Delaware was the first state. And um, uh, I believe it was founded on Kislev, 16th, um, in Kislev on the second day of Hanukkah, Delaware, was America was founded. And then the 50th state uh, was um, founded um, on Av 17, the day of the Hebron massacre. And so Hawaii is a 50th state where 
the uh, you know previous president Obama came from, and he uh, literally the 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 Pearl Harbor, so the the Pearl Harbor massacre, so the Hebron massacre happened on the same prophetic day um, off 17 as the founding of the 50th state, the last state of America, so that there's two massacres, and one representing a pearl. Uh, kind of reminds me of the pearl with um, over in the Middle East where it shows an Ipeco too. You know, a, a woman, a uh, Muslim, you know, covered in black with her child, uh, has a, you know, wrapped in bandages like a mummy, like an Egyptian. Um, and there's a scarab beetle that, you know, crawls over the, the woman, um, and it represents the pearl, and there's an atomic bomb behind her that's a spiritual bomb, and uh, it's representing, re representing destruction, and then she's catching a bottle of tears. Um, it reminds me of the Trail of Tears. Uh, I don't know that much about the Trail of Tears, but I think it's prophetic, and I'm going to have to be, you know, researching that. <clears throat> Yeah, Pluto actually reminds me of um, that dog and Disney, the Disney dog, Pluto. I like the unholy, the mouse, the evil mouse. I actually saw a YouTube video. There was a uh, little uh, rodent and uh, kind of looked like a Pikachu, like the Pokemon, like poke the man. They want to poke the man to enter into you. Um, and this Pikachu... It, this little rodent was called a pika, P-I-K-A, and it would literally gather um, grass and straw, and then it would uh, store it in rocks for the winter, and it would dry up. So the Pikachu literally uh, is based after this rodent called the pika, and so the pika, you could go watch a video right now, I'm not lying. This pika goes and gathers all this deciduous shrubs and grasses and flowers in spring and, and summer, and then it doesn't hibernate, so it eats all of it during the winter. And so the Pikachu eating this grass or hay or chaff to be burned represents the winter. And so Pikachu, like peek at you, like a Pikachu, um, they want to poke the man with the, the, the pokey balls, um, the bale earth lie. They want to keep us in, um, you know, a constant, you know, lies. So they uh, hold us, you know, in this fantasy world that they have made with a web of lies, uh, trying to keep us from the truth. And when we truly find the truth, they try and say, all right, you know, you're saved. And their false duality being good and bad without Christ, they say, all right, you know, the first step and when someone gets saved is we're going to try and trick them to be good. And by being good, not being delivered. So this false goodness, instead of being truly delivered, and so if the Lord searches your heart, and then as, you know, your heart is being searched, and you're true in heart, he delivers you, and so he softens your heart. Um, a lot of people, kind of reminds me of um, softened butter, and like Paula Dean and the Food Network. They literally, she actually, I think this was a spiritual ritual, but she was obsessed with butter from, you know, Paula Dean down south. She would, you know, eat, you know, stick of butter, stick of butter. And then she uh, eventually started getting heart attacks or, you know, her health declined. So it's prophetic of that. So if you eat, you know, too much fat, it's like um, Eglin. Eglin was the king who became fat. And then one of um, the, the people, I forget who it was, but he came up her and stabbed him in the belly. And the knife went into his belly, and then literally his stomach ate the handle, and his insides, his bowels came out, and um, and so he fled down a latrine. The the person who you know assassinated him, and then uh, it's like um, hmm, latrine, like a moat, like a it kind of reminds me of being flushed down a toilet, if you will. You know, he fled down through the toilet like a like a rat, you know, a lot of sewer rats, you know, like in New York, they have, you know, sewer rats, you know, coming up out of the toilets. Uh, and, you know, the unclean mouse, like a uh, representative of Mickey Mouse, you know, um, hot dog kind of thing. You know, they're talking about, 
you know, hot dogs mixed with pork, you know, and now they have kosher hot dogs, you know, made of beef, but, um, it's like being good and bad without Christ. You know, they, it actually symbolizes, um, a phallus, you know, dog in, in a bun, um, it used to be sausages, um, like dog sausages, like, uh, you know, leading a dog, but <clears throat> is interesting is I actually was making some food the other night and I had a, some olives and in the olive, here's a branch, a little olive branch and it looked like a collarbone. And so I, it kind of reminded me of his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So, you know, like the collar bone, you know, these two bones right here. All right. So these two bones kind of, kind of comes down, kind of reminds me of like angel wings, if you will. And so either you can be, you know, have a collar around your neck like a dog, and dog is God backwards, or you can actually um, be repentant and have his yoke like um, an ox. Um, you can, you know, do the, the work, and you're not supposed to muzzle an ox as it treads out the grain. And so when you serve the Lord, you're literally treading out the grain, and you're able to freely graze. You're able to Literally, you know, what does an ox do? Literally, they live and they eat and, you know, they can exercise at the same time. You know, they can be utilized. So the Lord utilizes his servants. And instead of being a servant to sin and doing whatever you want, like a free range, you know, going wherever, you know, going to whatever field that you want, grazing whatever you want, you know, you can actually be utilized by the Lord and tread out the grain. And then the Lord provides for you as you're treading out the grain. And, um... <clears throat> So as you're treading out the grain, you know, the cow needs the grain, but sometimes uh, if, you know, the fields are filled with chaff as well as grain, the cows might be eating some chaff as well as the grain. And so that's why the Lord says, you know, don't, um, you know, rip out the chaff at the same time as, you know, the grain, because, you know, it might supplant, uh, you know, uh, take away, you know, some opportunity for someone else who might have come into that ministry and then be saved and then go somewhere else. Like a lot of times when you uh, have a ministry, a lot of people uh, think, you know, all right, I'm going to stick with this one, but you're not supposed to stick with any ministry, you know, take what you need, leave what you don't and keep on moving. A lot of people, they, um, you know, what, where is your loyalty, the Lord or, um, you know, working for him or, or uh, a church building? You know, the, the church building isn't, um, the church building isn't the church, but it's the people who make the church. warm in here. Whew. And so the body of Christ <coughs> is made out of, you know, those who accept the Lord. And those who accept the Lord will be led by his spirit no matter where he goes. And so you can either be a sin, um, you know, uh, have a dog collar with sin, or you have his yoke is easy and his burden light, and you, you know, go where he, you know, are led. Um, and so the Lord leads us, and so the enemy tries to fill us with lead. Lead, like, uh, you know, shot from a gun. And um, graphite, like... <clears throat> this stuff, this isn't really lead. It's um, graphite. And graphite is uh, like uh, graphene oxide, which has you know, different stuff in it. Um, but either you can be filled with the enemy's lies, his lead, or you can be led by the Lord, the straight and narrow path. <clears throat> I actually made a video about um, air conditioning and the AC prophecy 
you know, the enemy tries to use, you know, all these different terms and, and symbols and words and sounds and meanings for his own devices. So AC literally means air conditioning, or you can, you know, it means antichrist. But what's interesting is A and C is separated with a line. And the line is literally like the eclipse that's going to happen, you know, like a, a semi, a slash. That's what they call it, a slash. So the A, the anti, is separated from the Christ. So the separation from the wheat and the chaff. So the A and then the C. So Christ, the C is on the right. Okay, like the, um, the sheep and the goats. And Niagara Falls is Goat Falls, like Goat Island. So literally the, the eclipse is going to go over Goat Island and the separation of the wheat and the chaff, like the sheep and the goats. And the sheep will be on the right side and the goats will be on the left side. Where does it separate with America? So the goats are on the east side, the Washington DC, okay? Like AC and DC current, like Antichrist and DC comics. Like, um, I remember Iron Man, okay? Iron Man, in the comics, his actual father, his dad, is Satan. So a lot of people don't know that. They don't, you know, they're like, oh, it's just Iron Man. Well, in the comics, his uh, dad is a snake. And so it's going to separate from the east from the west, all right? And the, the sheep and the goats, who is, you know, on the right side and the left side, the left side um, is in America, you know, the split, okay? So Washington, D.C. and all that, and the east side versus the west side. Um, interesting. I've been on for 66 minutes now, like Exodus 6-6, six, six, like the separation. So there, there's that prophetic, you know, the Lord actually uses time, signs, every single, you know, thing and then you know so yeah the enemy you know has been trying to make me think you know oh, no you're not saved you're not a real prophet and a lot of people are like oh yeah ah. but you know i i pray you know a lot of times i go into a different um uh different channels and different ministries and for a little while i i look at their videos and i learn i glean some stuff from them and then i go on i'm like all right you know and then there's some lies mixed in and me personally, I've been misled sometimes, but I've repented. And so, you know, we're supposed to forgive as many times as someone repents. And please forgive me, I repent, you know, if there's any stuff. But you know, the other stuff, the truth, is supposed to persist. And, uh, you know, the, the wheat will be separated from the chaff. And we may not know the whole truth right now because no one knows that, you know, everything at one time. Um, you know, it's like everyone's supposed to serve one another in truth and in righteousness. Uh, you know, not one person can be, you know, specialized in any one thing. So, you know, one person cooks and makes food. Uh, another person, you know, they, you know, service people like uh, technicians, you know, um, uh, they come in. And so everyone serves one another. Everyone, you know, is specialized. The whole body of Christ has different meanings and different, you know, stuff they're supposed to do. And um, some people, they, you know, weren't called and they try and you know, do something that the Lord hasn't called them to do, so they're not in the right place um, in the body of Christ, and they're not doing you know, the right thing, and so the Lord has to usher them, you know, bring them back um, to where they're supposed to be, to, uh, you know, fully functionally operate in the body of Christ and how he wants. <clears throat> going to be an hour. Now an hour. It's 10-17, 11-17. The eclipse will be happening. And um, so I'm excited. Um, you know, the Lord doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but that, uh, that of sound mind. And so we're watching and waiting and you know, the rapture might not happen, you know, just right at the eclipse. But it is certainly a warning uh, to America. And it might be, you know, the X marks the spot, the you know, fall of mystery of Babylon. Um, What's interesting is Revelations. It says that the harlot, the the mother of um, you know perdition and sin, you know wickedness is actually um, portrayed as a woman in a netted pot with sealed with lead. <clears throat> so the top is sealed with lead, and 
you know, lies, like the evil one's lies. And eleven seventeen on the west coast reminds me of like eleven eleven. And uh I believe it's uh, 317 that is going to happen over in uh, the west, the east coast. Um, so 317 <laughs> reminds me of like a. Now what's interesting is Revelation 4.4, 4, it says, many eyes, and so there's been a lot of eclipse um, uh, maps that I saw where it shows, you know, the eclipse going over America, and it shows the sun in different positions uh, in relation to it, and <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of, you know, uh, the Lord coming down on uh, his throne with four living wheels, uh, you know, cherubim and seraphim, and they had a lot of eyes on them. And so in the rapture, <clears throat> people are going to be looking up, many eyes watching the sun. Um, you know, I've actually been battling with some spirits who I've been driving around and, you know, they, they've been trying to have me work at night instead of during the day. And when I'm up during the day, actually, it is like these spirits of darkness, like logs, motes, and specks, like, you know, spirits of blindness were trying to blind me and keep me from being able to have my eyes fully open while I was you know driving during the day so driving during the day um, it was like they were trying to keep me from being able to have my eyes filled with light like true the Lord's light and um, so you know it's not against flesh and blood that we battle with it's against the spirits and principalities and high places and a lot of these people you know they're actually uh, being uh, affected by these principalities and powers, including territorial spirits, you know, lesser spirits around the different areas. And, you know, with spiritual warfare, a lot of people, they are acting a certain way. Uh, these spirits are misleading and misguiding them. And they don't really realize what they're doing sometimes. You know, I mean, a lot of, you know, physical things have a spiritual, you know, meaning behind them. Um, and so different days and times and the way things, you know, people, you know, you know, they uh, present themselves uh, can be spiritually indicative of uh, something more spiritual behind them. And so we just have to be vigilant and prayerful. Uh, you know, we have to have faith. Um, there's been some times where, let's say, Pontius Pilate, he, uh, Christ was about to be crucified. And he said, you know, hey, you know, he is innocent. Uh, you know, so he got some water and, uh, you know, he washed his hands with water. He said, I wash my hands of this. And it's interesting, you know, there's neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ. And either you can be a Gentile, you know, at heart and, you know, truly be loving of other people. Um, or you can be like a Pharisee, you know, not loving and just, I have to follow God's laws. I have to do this. I have to do that. You know, it's like, um, so the Lord says that the way to, uh, you know, through him is through faith and the way is straight and narrow. So we have to go through the straight and narrow path. So a lot of, you know, Gentiles, they actually are, um, you know, loving at heart, but they're not following the way the Lord wants. And so a lot of Jews, they are actually, you know, following the Torah, you know, the way that the Lord wants, but they're not being loving. So uh, those who say, you know, love others as you love yourself, they're not far from the kingdom of heaven. But the Lord, everything goes hand in hand. So a lot of people are like, you know, once saved, always saved. Well, it's not that easy. Uh, a lot of people say that, oh, no, works-based salvation. No, no, not works-based salvation. So what is it? So the, the path is straight and narrow. So how do you become more righteous than a Pharisee? 
that's what he said. You know, you have to be more righteous than a Pharisee or else you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of people, you know, they're trying to follow the laws, but they're trying to do it piously. So they're trying to follow the laws like, all right, you know, I have to do this a very certain way. But, you know, a lot of people, no one's perfect and everyone messes up. So if you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven through following the law, but if you don't preach the law, then you'll be called the least. But if you do preach the law, then you'll be called the most. So, you know, it seems as if you can't get through either way. Well, what is it? So you have to find this straight and narrow path. And through this straight and narrow path, you try your best at following the Lord's laws. And, you know, one time actually I was thinking to myself, all right, you know, well, I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, eat clean. I'm trying to not eat pork or, you know, unclean foods. And <clears throat> I was cleaning up and I thought, you know, the, the Passover is going to be here real soon. And you're supposed to get rid of all the yeast, like the leavening in your bread, in your home. Well, I was starting to clean up and I was looking, you know, all these, you know, ingredients, you know, in, you know, the different foods. I was like, you know, does this, does this have yeast in it? Oh my gosh, it has yeast. And it's like a lot of foods have yeast extract. And I was thinking, wait, this is soup. Literally, there's yeast extract in the soup. So if I actually, you know, were to eat this, if I try to put it in some kind of, you know, bread, okay, if I mix soup and bread, and it kind of reminds me actually, soup and bread, there was a prophet, can't remember who, uh, but uh, they were literally eating food and it literally had, po it was poisonous. So he threw a little bit of flour in there and it purified it. He, he prayed over it and it purified the poisonous soup. So it kind of reminds me, but this yeast extract was in the soup and I'm thinking, you know, no yeast kind of thing. Like, is, you know, the enemy is trying to make me like a Pharisee. All right? I got to get rid of all yeast, you know, no yeast extract, no leaven, no baking powder, no baking soda, no um, yeast. Like a lot of yeast, I actually have a, a packet of Red Star yeast and it was actually for sourdough. And I was looking at the back of it, it said kosher, parve. And I was thinking parve, kosher, reminds me of parvo like the dog sickness when dogs can't stop throwing up and so they give them gatorade like gatorade with the the lightning bolt like you know the, the lightning like satan all right so you know electrolytes um and so i was like you know i gotta get rid of all yeast and i was i was looking at my uh, toaster and i'm like all right you know i'll just get all those crumbs out of the toaster and i started shaking the toaster to try and get the crumbs out of it and i'm thinking wait if i went through the toaster and it toasted it, and all these little crumbs are you know, literally blackened and toasted, then all the yeast is literally purified, just like f the flatbread, okay? If I took that, those yeast, um, if I took the crumbs, and I tried to put it in, you know, something, and try and use it as a leavening, it wouldn't leaven, because it's literally purified by the, so it's like the Pharisee, you know, you're not supposed to be like, oh, you know, I gotta go through all this yeast, I gotta cut clear and purify everything, kind of thing. A lot of people, they are actually cashering, Okay, they're cashering their kitchens. They're really taking blowtorches. Okay, uh, rabbis, you know, Christ said, call no man rabbi. So they're literally purifying their kitchens and everything. And uh, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're <laughs> um, a blowtorch. It's a little much. All right, you know. Uh, so they cashier their kitchens. They try and get rid of all the oils. Like, oh no, maybe they cut pork on this kitchen you know, counter, so I got to purify it with fire. Um, you know, they're, they're going above and beyond. But when the Lord said, get rid of all yeast and leaven, it literally meant, you know, the stuff that you put in bread to make it leaven. Okay. So, and a lot of people are like, you know, well, you know, that's yeast, you know, uh, baking powder, baking soda isn't yeast. So it's literally leavening like yeast. Okay. So you can have righteous yeast which is the yeast of heaven. Literally, in the Bible, it equates yeast to hell or heaven. It's like the, the blessing and the curse. So you can choose either one, right? So you have free will. Yeast can either be a blessing or a curse. So either you can, you know, you know, scramble and be worried about, you know, all this little breadcrumbs, which you're never, ever going to be able to get rid of every single breadcrumb in your house unless you 
are perfect. And only the Lord is perfect. So it's symbolic of, all right, you know, you got to, I want you to, you know, purify your household. So you, you do your best. And there's one time where I purified my household, you know, for Passover. And I literally checked under a carpet and there was a piece of bread. And I got upset. And I'm like, why am I getting upset? It's just a piece of bread. But it was yeast. You know, I was worried about the yeast, right? So a lot of people are like breadcrumbs. They're worried over breadcrumbs. Kind of reminds me of Hansel and Griddle. Um, you know, going into the, you know, you know, putting the breadcrumbs, you know, and and the witch, you know, with the gingerbread house or whatever, and you know, trying to uh, the gingerbread man. He going in there and they're trying to fatten them up to try and, you know, this witch is trying to eat them, um, which is indicative of, you know, being uh, sinful and you know not following the straight and narrow path. So if you're not following the straight and narrow path, you're literally being like a Pharisee or you're being like a Gentile who's not just, you know, loving, but, you know, not following the Lord. So the straight and narrow path is a little bit of both, okay? So you, you have to try your best um, and no one can do their best. They, no one can be perfect. So you can't get in by your own righteousness or works, but that doesn't discredit works. Just like Romans, you know, you know, it's less than any man should boast. So you're supposed to be good and not just good, but holy. And the Lord knows that we're fallible and perfect. Uh, so, you know, you have to be loving like a Gentile and you have to try your best like a, a, a Pharisee, not like a Pharisee, but a, a Jew, you know, following the Torah. Um, and, you know, following the Torah, me personally, it says, you know, the, there's Levitical law and then there's the Torah. So the Levites had were held to one standard and then the rest of Israel was held to another standard. So in, in going into the, the Holy of Holies, you had to be purified if you were outside of the tabernacle and you're not worth a Levite. Um, uh, so there's different, you know, layers of standards and, um, you know, there's different certain amounts of holiness. So there's the Holy of Holies and then the Holy... And then there is, you know, outside, you know, the holy, and then there's uh, God's holy nation, you know, the nation that he chose to bring forth salvation to the rest of the world. They were elected by the Lord, uh, and so they brought forth uh, through Christ his sacrifice. They, um, you know, said, no, sacrifice him, and Pontius, Pontius Pilate put the king of the Jews, you know, as the head. And they're like, no, don't put that, just say, uh, you know, whatever. And so, you know, uh, through, you know, the purification of sin, Christ has brought salvation. And so if you don't follow Christ in the way he wants through faith, even if it seems foolish to the rest of the world, then you're not following him. So you have to try your best. And in the Levitical law, it says you're not supposed to wear anything other than, you know, like fine linen, you know, like not, not wear two types of thread. And so me personally my shirt you know a lot of stuff is you know they put two types of thread they put nylon you know um stuff that's unnatural in there they um i don't use linen you know it's you know i you know a lot of people would have to go way out of their way in order to find a pure linen garb and a lot of people you know they might be able to try you know you might be able to you know you know fill your closets and you know with, uh, you know, uh, stuff that isn't, you know, has just, you know, one thread, okay? But it'd be quite hard. I saw a lot of people, you know, they don't have as much opportunity. They might, you know, be living in an area where, you know, they're dependent upon something else. But <clears throat> when Christ came to the Gadarenes and there was a legion, legion came up and he's like, you know, why are you messing with us? And, uh, they, you know, begged them, him, <clears throat> to, you know, not torture them for their time, and to, you know, send them into the pigs. And so the, they went with the pigs, and the Gadarenes, they were pig farmers, and so they were reliant on the pigs, and the pigs all fell into the ocean. And so they were upset because Christ literally took away their food source, and they literally couldn't see who <laughs> was in, uh, you know, the Lord was in front of them. And they could have been like, oh, what is this? This great sign. All our pigs. And what? You know, they, he was literally delivered from a legion of spirits. And they could have been like, oh my gosh, you, you delivered him. Uh, what? 
you, you know, you're the, the Messiah. And they could have said, you know, our pigs are gone. Can you help us with some food? And the Lord would have obliged. You know, he could have split the fish and the bread and the loaves, and he could have fed them, all right? And miraculously, so a lot of people, they get upset when they lose something, all right? The Lord is the our Lord who gives and takes away. So a lot of people, they get upset when something is taken away from them, but they don't know that there's something better in store. So in store kind of reminds me of storing grain like Exodus um, and Pharaoh in Genesis 41 with the fat cows and skinny cows. So with this fat, you know, they stored the grain, okay? So either you can store grain here on earth and then, you know, uh, kind of try and take, you know, hold of, you know, people, you know, divvy out the grain like America has. Uh, you know, it might happen today. It might happen tomorrow. Uh, you know, the rapture, uh, he says, no man knows the day or the hour. Only the Father, not even Christ. But what's interesting is Christ is one with the Father. You know, he's the flesh of God, all right? So triune God, God the Father, Yahweh, Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and then Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. So when Christ came in the, the flesh, God in the flesh, okay, he had his human nature, okay? He had to resist temptation. He resisted the devil, especially for 40 days. And then Revelation, you know, 4, 8, he brought him up to a high mountain and, off, and the devil offered him the world and he said no. Uh, and then 4, um, 9, uh, the, he said bow down to me and he didn't bow down. So 4, 9 reminds me of um, the day before the red heifer sacrifice. And the 4, 10, the red heifer sacrifice is going most likely going to happen. And then 410 is actually Nisan 2, the second day of Nisan. And so that represents the 410, get away from me, Satan. And then Satan left him and then the angels came to take, you know, to help him. So that's kind of indicative of a rapture scenario. Okay, so Satan tempts and then he resists and then Satan is rebuked. Satan leaves and then the angels attended Christ. So we could be attended um, you know, the 144,000 will be attended and the body of Christ might be taken up as well. But it seems as if <clears throat> there was actually a person who commented in my channel. He said that um, 1,260 days from Nisan, uh, the Passover, okay, so Passover will be uh, Yom Kippur, the day of judgment, like the, the great and final day. Um, and then 1,260 days from that will be, um, oh, what was it? Some other thing, but it was, it divides evenly. Um, and so it, he was saying that maybe it'll happen, maybe not on the eclipse, but it will happen possibly, you know, uh, at Passover, literally just like the, the 10 plagues of Egypt and um you know genesis 41 with pharaoh and the skinny and fat cows um so it seems as if america is storing up judgment and they have you know it's almost as if with the the mark you know no man will be able to buy or sell without the mark and so it's as if pharaoh um storing up the grain and then if you store up the grain and then the pharaoh was divvying it out so pharaoh is indicative of Akhenaten, the, which looks just like Obama, and then so black and white duality couldn't battle without Christ. So you have, uh, you know, melanin is indicative of you know African slavery, and the Egyptians were also had a lot of melanin. They were black. All right, they're actually a little bit lighter than you know African Americans. You know, Africans they they're a little bit kind of a little bit redder, if you will. So kind of black red. Um, kind of reminds me of Native Americans. They had redder skin. Okay, so. Uh, you have black, and they were, uh, it's a spiritual, uh, the enemy tried to make black as a symbol for evil, and then white as a, a symbol for good. So good and bad without Christ. So either you can be good or bad without Christ, or you can be holy. So the, the black man was literally a symbol of being a slave, uh, just like the um, Israelites then were actually being enslaved by the Egyptians. Uh, and a lot of people say that the Israelites back then were also darker skinned, okay? A little bit more darker skinned than Olive. And so it's like, it's the same color enslaving the same color back then, okay? So the white man literally was 
an enemy calls uh, Christ because it says that the Lord had like skin like burnished bronze. Okay, burnished bronze is is quite dark. Okay, and, but he his light his Shekinah comes from him. Okay, so uh, he is the white man, even though he was darker skinned. Okay, God the Father. All right, God the Son. I believe is olive skin. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not you're black or white. Um, but it's um, so the white man was he divides and conquers the white man was became a symbol of the slave owner so you have a slave owner versus a slave and they're fighting against one another now either you can accept that good and bad without christ that false paradigm or you can accept christ and be holy whether or not you're black white red anything irish speckles on your you know freckles on your face you know i got some freckles okay <laughs> um uh but you know, it's it's not good or bad without Christ, but yeah, it, the Lord actually banned slavery. Literally, He's been purifying that out of society. That's the that Lord's end game: is no more slavery. Um, that's like you know Thanos, you know the Avengers end game, you know. Um, so the separation, you know, the snap the finger, the separation. Okay, you know people. The harpazo, the rapture, flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, we're not going to fly like birds, like flesh birds flying up into the sky, okay? We might be instantly transformed into glorified bodies, and then we might... But, also, we might actually just disappear. We might disappear. We might be instantly vaporized, okay? Purified like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three... The Holy Trinity, okay, with Christ saving him, with not bowing down to Nebuchadnezzar, you know, the, 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 you know, um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, you know, he, the, the statue, the gold, the bronze, the clay, and then the miry clay, you know, the clay mixed. So we might be instantly transformed through Holy, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit Shekinah. And uh, imagine this, you know, when we're, our skin is burned, skin victims. They, there's no more pain, okay? You can't feel pain anymore because the, the nerves are burnt. So if we're instantly purified, our old flesh is dead. Literally, we're uh, right now, we, our flesh it has the sin nature. So we have to literally resist the sin nature because the enemy is constantly tempting us. And when we're tr- instantly transformed, we'll have our instant you know, glorified bodies. So the Lord will be with us and... You know, if you're va- instantly vaporized, would you feel any pain? Would you, you know, realize that? No, you wouldn't. So our flesh, this flesh right here, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But our new soul, so our soul is inhabited by the Holy Spirit, and then we're transformed, we're translated. Our soul is translated into spirit when we're faithful and obedient upon the point of repentance and baptism and being baptized by the, the Lord's Holy Spirit. So that's why the enemy is constantly trying to oppress us. Um, and his, the time is short. Um, so it's not Satan's short season, it's Satan's short time. Revelation 12. And so yeah, the Lord has been um, delivering us out of slavery, bondage, and those who still accept the world, they're living like worldly lives. They're still living in bondage. And so, you know, you just have to be faithful. <laughs> Travis Statham reminds me of um, uh, s- s- something Statham. Jason Statham, that actor. Not Liam Neeson. Um, yeah, Jason Jason Statham. <laughs> uh, Rush Hour? I can't remember what they um, they played in. Yeah, Jason Statham. Yep. You know, I actually had a, um, a friend named Travis. His name was Travis Brown. And he actually was demonically possessed. Oh, yeah, the transporter. Yeah, just like the rapture. Okay, Jason Statham, the, the transporter. See, our names actually have spiritual indicative meanings. So the enemy has us have a persona okay so my name before michael was michael robert sabados 
Michael, Robert, like Mikael, like a false Michael, and then Robert is the Robbie, like being robbed, like Robbie the robot, like lost in space, like their fake space lie. And then Sabados, Sabados is um, Spanish for Saturdays, so Sabados, Sabados, okay? So Saturdays, like living for the weekend, okay? So it was all this just false thing, and so the Lord literally physically spoke to me while I was awake, and he's like, hello, Michael, I wanted to congratulate you on your achievements. You performed as you ought. You were set to the mission of spreading my word. You have resisted the enemy at all turns. Even now you take up my sword and armor, resisting the enemy's lies fed into your ears. You have proved yourself to be aligned in my tribe of Judah. I have sent you upon this world to just through sight and how wicked they have become as I calibrate my scales. What you are is not what you will become. No, you're one of my sons. Be steadfast and relay these as warnings to come. One, any wicked man who tries to move another mountain is dumb, creating towers of Babel around the world. Just like the the towers, like all the skyscrapers are towers of Babel, okay? So two became one, the One World 1776 Tower. Two, uh, all those, uh, making a mountain out of a molehill is a war that will never be won. God sees this wicked generation as a molehill, which will be leveled and overthrown. And three, all those who are wicked are the ones who deny my son Jesus. Self-explanatory. Four, all those who pick up arms shall die by the gun. All those who should try to keep their lives shall lose it. And five, all things I do for my pleasure, but some of it's not fun. God does not enjoy chastising his children with punishment. Jesus and I have become to sow reparations for the wickedness which has been sown. Thank you, Michael. And so reparations represents slavery, okay? So the reparations delivering us from slavery. And he was talking about how all those who are wicked are the ones who deny Jesus. So those, their entire lives who would deny him and or they say that they do, but they actually don't by the way they live. And then all those that pick up arms shall die by the gun. So like reminds me of the elephant gun, like uh, Texas, you know, the guns, like, you know, God, guns and whatever, um, you know. So the eclipse is going over Texas. They gave the red heifers to Israel. So it, it's indicative of a gun. All right. So Texas looks like a trigger. Okay. The Lone Star State. Okay. Um, <clears throat> God guns and rapture, um, you know, the Lord will pull the trigger, if you will, um, like a mat from underneath the enemy's feet, and, uh, you know, in an instant, will be transformed, and so the head wound reminds me of the head wound, okay, so the Antichrist will receive a head wound, and then they'll be healed, so it's as if maybe the head wound is both spiritual and physical, so the head wound, um, I, I don't know a lot about God. The Lord knows a lot about himself, and he's just using me as a mouthpiece. What's interesting is they're actually, they kind of mock me. Um, they actually, they had me make these cookies. They're called tweels, okay? So um, egg whites, sugar, flour, vanilla. Um, reminds me of the Iago parrot, okay? So Iago, it's like the unholy communion. Um... The Lord is the one who brings us to knowledge, wisdom, and discernment. And either you can have unholy communion, like the Polly want a cracker kind of thing, like um, Dolly Parton, like Dolly, like Texas, like the parting of the waters, the Red Sea, like the eclipse is going to go over. So Dolly Parton with um, Jolene, uh, Jolly, Holly Jolly, like Santa equals Satan, like, all right, yeah. Um, yeah, scientism. Scientism is actually full of lies. It's it's what they try to do to cover up the truth. So everything is spiritual. Everything physical comes from the spirit. And so, you know, Lord, his spirit of water comes from the spirit. So there's literally in the Bible, it says that there's an angel that is literally um, has all dominion over water. And the Lord has all dominion over the angel of water. So um, Christ, <laughs> Christ, physical, physical matter rocks, the rock of our salvation. He made us from the clay. It's ground up rocks and different, you know, stuff. So we're literally, yeah, like the rock. So that's um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. They mock Christ. Okay. Dwayne the Rock Johnson played in a movie called Jumanji. There was a second Jumanji movie and they went to a video game. It was like a video game in there. Uh, so he was also actually played um, like Shazam, like um, that one. So he played a uh, I forget what movie it was, but <laughs> yeah, we're not apes. We're literally made from the dust, but you know, God makes all different flesh, you know? He made us in his image, and he made monkeys with opposable thumbs, but not in his image. So 
You know, there's other uh, animals that have opposable, you know, appendages that they can use, and you know, but we're all different flesh, all different animals, all different um, creatures, plants. Uh, I could imagine that they're a different type of flesh than physical, you know, flesh, like flesh, flesh, but uh, they're also made from, you know, the, you know, the earth. Um, it's, you know, the dirt, you know, from death. Okay, so it's interesting with trees. Trees were made pure to begin with. There literally wasn't any death on the earth when God made creation. So where was the, the dirt? So the dirt, things die and they make dirt. So the dirt wasn't death back then in Eden. So now you have a plant that is planted in death and then it brings life, just like the mustard seed. Unless you plant a seed in death, it cannot bring life. So Christ died on the cross for our sins, so his mustard seed was planted so he could bring life. No. So, yeah, fun, fungi, fungi, like a fun guy, like the Joker, um, making jokes, the enemy. Literally, I'm, I watched this Sonic movie with, um, uh, it was Jim Carrey the high satanic priest of Hollywood. He was in the Sonic movie and he was in a fungi world. So a fungus world. And he had this quill, this like hedgehog quill, okay? And he touched it to his tongue and it was like electricity, whatever. It was like, he was trying to use it as a power. And uh, so fungus is actually, you know, all these different bacteria and everything was made as he pre-planned, God pre-planned all these creatures to act in, in creation and symbiosis, right? But first, without death, and then when sin happened, there became death. Um, right. I, I no longer watch movies. All I do, the Lord has been... Every single... Let me put it this way. The enemy has us trudge through mud. Okay, so in the military, you trudge through, you know courses you know there's barbed wire and there's mud okay and you're going through like it's the beaches in normandy okay so you get off the boat and then you try and go to the beach and then you're being shot at okay so the enemy knows our destiny and so the enemy is trying to use our free will to surplant destiny but he can't because the lord will bring us back each time if we have faith in the Lord. So those who have faith until their day of their death or the rapture. So the enemy tries to do everything before we're saved as a ritual against like us. So the Lord has us balance the scales, if you will. So before we're saved, the enemy tries to make us um, raise in sin. Okay. It's like raising a building, like a tower of Babel. And then when we're saved, the Lord says, all right, you know, you're saved now. Your old man is dead. I'm going to bring you up into righteousness. And then the old you is dead. It crumbles and falls. Just like um, the... Uh, not the Twin Towers. So the Twin Towers, they fell, and then there's going to be ash. And then from the ashes comes the Phoenix, the Antichrist. But the walls of Jericho. Okay, so... You went around the walls of Jericho seven times, you blew the trumpet, and then the walls of Jericho fell. Okay? So it's just like that. The Lord has our Berlin Wall, the walls of Jericho, fall, and then we are raised up in righteousness and holiness, like the rapture. So the old person is dead, becomes rubble, like Christ. Um, he took away the, the temple when he was crucified. The, the second temple was destroyed and demolished, and then the third temple came back as spirit living in us, so we're the third temple. <clears throat> you know, the, the enemy divides and conquers just like black and white, so tries to make everyone fight against one another. Um, denominations sounds like demon nations, okay? To, the Tower of Babel fell and then was split among all the nations, so demon nations without God. So um, the enemy tried to make his own word, his own voice, his own sound, his... The enemy's just spirit, okay, uh, covering cherub, and he tries to embody wickedness and tries to be like God, so just like a carbon copy, if you will. So that's why we have to resist the flesh. We're carbon-based life forms, as they say, scientism, but we're actually spirit inside a spiritual flesh body. Um, so he separated the nations between tongues, 
And so when the, the nations were separated with tongues, uh, the day of Pentecost, everyone, um, they uh, came together as one. And then when the Holy Shekinah, the Holy Spirit came down, everyone was able to talk in everyone else's language to spread the gospel. So the Lord uses that, the Holy Spirit, in order to speak tongues, in order to spread the gospel, okay? So the enemy has his version, Towers of Babel, computer towers that translate so you don't have to use the Holy Spirit. You're not relying on the Holy Spirit. Just like Paul says, there's actually supposed to be an order to the church, okay? There's the uh, Christ, the apostles, the prophets, and then the servants, and then and so on and so forth, and women are not supposed to preach. They can actually edify the body of Christ in a familial family situation where they teach their children how to be uh, good children, you know, of God, uh, children of God, and then the enemy tries to suck all the life and fun out of them. What is going around me? All right. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the woolly mammoth, okay. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that. The woolly mammoth, okay. Uh, Mastodon. The woolly mammoth is literally named Mastodon. Master Don. Like the false light. Like Abaddon. Abaddon. The, the bottomless pit who comes with the corona crown to with a, a bow to wage war and win many victories. And so... Uh, the enemy has this all planned. He has a blueprint, okay? So the enemy has his firm... The Christ has a firm foundation. The enemy tries to flip things. Isaiah 520, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. So the enemy tries to make you see the opposite sometimes. It's like, wait, no. <laughs> uh, so the enemy tries to make his foundation on top of Christ's foundation, and they they plan things in advance. So they literally made a um, dinosaur lie based upon a predatory... Uh, lizard animals like the snake they couldn't have gone on the ark Noah's ark uh, dinosaurs couldn't have lived at the same time as, as humans they, they never existed it's a cover up like the covering cherub of covering a web of lies like a red tape of lies uh, covering up the giant Nephilim bones okay so they, they cover it up and then so they make all these lies and cover it up with stuff and then they plan things in advance to try and have their end game to, for them to win. So they uh, literally planned out uh, an elephant that was hairy, okay? So a hairy elephant literally means uh, like Jacob and Esau. Esau was born with a whole bunch of red hair, okay? So an elephant represents um, the the Republican and Democrat party, okay? The Republican Demo uh, Republican elephant, like uh, America looks like an elephant with a trunk, okay? Like Aladdin riding the elephant, okay? So you have elephants with red hair, which represents Jacob and Esau, and Esau gave up his birthright for a pot of lentils. So you have a pot of lentils, and the birthright was given up for that. And so you have an elephant, a hairy red elephant, which represents Esau, giving up his birthright for a pot of lentils, like the Antichrist riding the elephant, like Esau, giving up his birthright for the world. So you can be a worldly Christian, like a lot of people, the, the false Antichrist church flocking to a false messiah, like Ipec Goat 2, you know, the fish, the black and white fish, the good and bad fish, jumping onto the boat, which represents a gondola, like the river Styx going through into a birth canal. Um, at the end of it, it shakes, just like the earthquake and 4.8 earthquake happened in New York with the Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty shook, and you saw a video of the, the One World Tower. And the One World Tower, there was a beam that was um, assigned by Obama on Trump's 66th birthday, 614, I believe, and 66 equals Exodus 66. So it's their mockery. So the enemy, no. So the enemy is not as strong as um, the, the Lord. So the Lord has complete and total dominion over things. All the enemy do is, does is try to uh, trick people into giving up their birthrights. So either you can collude with the enemy and be led into a lie and give up, you know, stuff, give power to the beast, or you can 
you know, be with Christ, and Christ has all power and dominion and authority. And so, either you can live a lie or you can live a truth. So, the Lord could literally pull the enemy's plug at any time. So, it, he's just using the enemy now. So, the enemy wanted to fall and do his own thing, and he wanted to be like God. And so, the, the enemy uh, tries to copy everything of Christ. So, there's no power in that. Um, and so, with this, you know, copy... Um, they try and mislead and misguide people to give up their rights and sin and collude to sin. Uh, we're, what, we're not supposed to give our flesh away and, you know, we're not supposed to take. You know, it's, it's not ours to take and it's, it's not the Lord, you know, to give. So uh, we're supposed to love instead of um, sin. Yeah, so the authors, they uh, did battle with sin of the Bible. Um, no one's perfect. Uh, so a lot of people, they try and discredit the Bible saying, oh, you know, it was, it was written by sinners kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, everyone, um, the moral of the story is just like um, Nebuchadnezzar, he, uh, with the kingdom, he literally uh, said that, you know, oh, you know, I did this. And then the Lord was like, nope. And so uh, the Lord took away his, you know, mental faculty. And then he had him graze like a cow for seven years. And then he had his nails grew long and he literally um, grazed like a cow for seven years. So the Lord is the one who gives us free will. And if we sin, he can either judge us, he can literally take away our free will, just like Job. Job never sinned, but he he literally allowed the enemy to tempt and, and test Job to see test his character. Um, at the end, he did like, you know, why? I didn't do anything wrong. Why are you doing this to me? And the Lord was like, you know, uh, you're, the people saying that Job did something wrong were in the wrong, but Job just questioning the Lord sometimes is in itself, uh, you know, we're not supposed to question the Lord. You know, the Lord has all the dominion, but the Lord is the one who gives and takes away. And Job was like, you know, I wish there was a mediator between me and God so, you know, he could take away my strife. And so he used that prophetically of Christ who was, you know, torn and, and you know, and then Christ, um, the Lord, uh, blessed Job after, you know, he went through the, the trials and tribulations. Um Yeah, it doesn't seem possible. Like, Jonah and the worm. Jonah and the worm, so literally Jonah was swallowed by a whale, died, okay, and then he was spat back out of the shores of Nineveh, all right, so, and then he was revived, and then uh, he went and he preached to Nineveh, repentance, he didn't want them to repent, he thought they were sinful and they deserved to die. But the Lord, he was, you know, sitting out in the perimeter, and then the Lord had a, uh, vine grow with big leaves and he was in the shade and then a worm came the next day and ate it and he was like, I'm so mad I could die. Well, literally, you know, the Lord can speed up time and we could slow down time. He can, he literally, you know, came in a flesh body. He was died, buried, resurrected. The Lord has all, you know, dominion over creation. He makes um, the laws of nature. He controls the laws of nature. So, you know, anything could be of any way, but the Lord made it the way he pleased. And so either we can, you know, do things the way the Lord pleases, or we can do it our own way, trying to live it as our own gods. So a lot of people think, well, how could that happen? You know, he didn't have a rumen. He couldn't digest the grass. Well, the Lord probably gave him a rumen so he could digest the grass like a cow. Reminds me of the cows with seven years with the sevens on their forehead. So the two cows in September 26, um, they had the, the sevens on their forehead and the two sevens, like Don, like uh, the Trump was 77 right now. Um, but the you know, Lord can do as he pleases. He can judge people. He, you know, if you think that, you know, he can't do that, then how can you believe the resurrection? You know, it's like you only need you know, the physical, you know, kind of thing. So how can you believe in a miracle? You know, how you can't. I mean, either you can be a, a deist, 
uh, you know, you think that, you know, the Bible's finished work and then the Lord has just set it off. Or you can be a theist. You need to believe it from, you know, cover to cover that every single miracle happened. The Lord brought down burning sulfur from the sky. How can there be burning sulfur from the sky? I mean, a lot of people, they, I think the enemy covered it up by, you know, saying, you know, space, space rocks, but it's a firmament, you know, it's the way God created. So he literally, you know, opened up the, the windows of heaven and there's water outside of the firmament, the dome and flooded the earth. And then, you know, he, you know, finished Noah's flood and then he closed the, the sky, um, you know, openings. Yes, God did give him rumen. So it wasn't the Lord that inspired other religions, it was the enemy. So the enemy from the get-go knew that Christ would crucify himself to, um, So the enemy tries to make different religions based upon the death, burial, resurrection, and then he says that the death, burial, resurrection of Christ was based upon other religions. He switches, he flips the scripts, if you will. So the enemy takes inspiration, and then he tries to make something that's very close, and then he tries to make people believe in it, just like the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be like Christ, but he won't. So the man of sin is... People are being tricked into believing in the man of sin, and the man of sin is like a false messiah. They say whatever sounds good, but then uh, they will set themselves up in the temple, the third temple, and then say they're God. Uh, kind of like Kanye West, West is saying, oh, you know, all of a sudden he was for Christ, and all of a sudden he said, oh, I'm God. It's like, whoa, no, you are not God. Just like, um, uh, I believe there in the Bible, there was a, a person who went and uh, accepted praise from the people as if he was God and then an angel came and then struck them with worms and they they're eaten their insides were eaten so if you take praise and act as um, your own God you'll be you know uh, have you know, uh, plagues put upon you just like the, the worm came and ate the the vine so the Lord is the vine dresser so he can you know the prune the vine uh, who wh whoever produces fruit he keeps and he prunes it and then so it can produce more fruit but other vines like the wicked servants they don't you know listen to god they live like the world they say they accept the lord but they're not living like it their their heart isn't true then they're cut off so even the jews were cut off so you know you have to have a healthy reverence for the lord the lord doesn't give us a spirit of fear but we should have healthy reverence <clears throat> They say that, you know, Romulus and Remus was before Christ, but they say that the earth is thousands and thousands of millions of years old, but that's a lie. We're literally um, in, uh, so it's 3969, so 4007. We're literally like in like the 6,000th year of creation. So um, a lot of people, they think, you know, you know, it's millions of years old, but uh, if you look at um, Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a lake and there's like fish and stuff like that. And they, they found in this um, lake that the fish would, you know, sink to the bottom, the dead fish, and then sediment would form. And then the fish um, carcass would deteriorate and the bones would be layered. And every single day, there's a new layer of sediment. So every single layer is actually... Um, you know, builds and then it, you know, builds pressure. And within a few years, actually, it can actually crush down. And then the, the fish bone actually mineralizes much faster than uh, a lot of people would think. And so a lot of these um, animals with amber, you see there's these bugs in amber. If you look, um, I actually looked up the same bug and it, it was like this beetle with the long nose. And this beetle, I looked up and it was a beetle that's literally alive today and it was the same genus. And so uh, amber actually forms much faster than what they're saying. So a lot of this um, you know, ancient, you know, fossilized stuff is actually forming much faster than a lot of people realize. There is a person who actually uh, took a stuffed animal and they put it in this liquid bath filled with minerals and they had the minerals um, flush over this stuffed animal. And within about maybe, you know, 20 days, it had a crust that was, uh, you know, 
it literally mineralized, fossilized <laughs> the stuffed animal within a few weeks. So like the mineralization of teeth, um, you know, um, it's much faster. <clears throat> Yeah, poof them out of existence but the lord you know the lord actually does things uh in advance for prophetic meaning so uh it's like the karate kid okay so the karate kid the kid equals uh baby goats in old english so it's actually children but the karate kid okay uh kind of reminds me of the matrix when he learned kung fu in an instant like the matrix um, lie uh if you will so the karate kid learned uh, by taking a jacket and putting it on and then taking it off. So he learned Kung Fu. Um, he learned discipline by, you know, taking this jacket on. He didn't know what it meant beforehand, but after he had a whole bunch of experience, he learned that uh, if somebody tries to come up and, like, take you, grab you, okay, and you're wearing a jacket, he could literally take that jacket off real quick, turn around, and be able to face the opposition whatever was coming up against him to try and like you know kidnap him okay okay so uh the lord has things that he does prophetically which will bring people to salvation later on so it's all prophetic that's what prophecy is so like the eclipse it literally is a prophetic meaning of judgment to come or judgment that is going to be happening right now um so all these things have meaning just like noah's flood the ark you know the animals got onto the ark and you know, they went up and he had stored up, you know, all this food and stuff like that. And then uh, he mourned the passing. Uh, and then they, you know, the ark uh, doors closed. And then after seven days, the Noah's flood happened. And then it went up. And then he landed on the mountain Ararat. Um, and, uh, you know, all the animal life and everything, you know, um, you know, died. Okay. But he brought extra animals on there, clean animals that he could sacrifice. So uh, if you think about it, animals they procreate um and then just like adam and eve you know they they procreated um and a lot of people say you know whoa they would have had you know incest but um you know when you sin it's like spiritual incest if you will so it's all prophetic uh so the lord is leading us out of that either you can be made by the lord outside of him uh like Adam was made from the clay, or you can be your own God and procreate, make your own children as your own gods, um, uh, with or without sin. So Adam and Eve could not, could have not sinned, and they could have, uh, Ararat may have been, um, higher than Mount Everest, or it may have been Mount Everest, as a lot of people were saying that it might have been Mount Everest, um, Yeah, it is. I mean, people who sin, they do a lot of bad stuff, and it's gross. That's bad. So sin leads to death. So if you sin, you it leads to an imbalance, like you've taken more for yourself, and then other people are greedy, and then other people starve to death. Starving is gross. That's awful. People, you know, and when people starve to death, they start eating, you know. Uh, in Israel, they didn't have food, and uh, parents, they literally ate their child. They literally committed cannibalism, and they came up to... Um, the king at that time, King Saul, I believe, and he ripped his clothes in, you know, grief because they said, oh yeah, we agreed to eat our child and the next day would eat the other and then they decided they didn't want the child to be eaten. So without the Lord's provision, people do bad things and it leads to death. So if you sin, the Lord doesn't want to be with you and then he won't provide for you and then it leads to more sin. So either you can repent and then the Lord will chastise you and then he'll bless you like Job kind of thing or you can you know live in sin and then reap the consequences like rest in peace like rip you know
Well, when you think about it, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were committing sexual sin. He sent down burning sulfur. Either you can be drowned or burned. You know, is, is that bad? You know, you know, judging sin uh, is if somebody, you know, does something heinous. Is the capital punishment uh, bad? You know, it's uh, the Lord, you know, gives life and takes it away. So, yeah, I can't come up with prophecy on on a dime, if you will. So the Lord just leaves me, and um, I. You know, I, I pray for the Holy Spirit to guide me and, and lead me. And I actually said some stuff that actually, uh, some revelatory things um, a little bit earlier on in this live feed. Um, but yeah, just like um, the the eclipse separating the East Coast from the West Coast. Literally, it's like the separation from the wheat and the chaff, the goat, sheep and the goats. East America from West America. The East and the West, the left and the right. Say So the East literally is filled with Washington, D.C., a whole bunch of, you know, evil bureaucrats, uh, satanic uh, rulers, if you will. So that's the separation of wheat and the tares with the Niagara Falls, like Goat Island. So there's some revelatory stuff. Uh, I can't say, oh, in exactly two minutes the rapture will happen. <laughs> I can't say that because only the Father knows. But I'm um, going back to that because Christ, who was the flesh, he died, resurrected, okay, so he went back to be with the Father, okay? So Christ is God the Father in the flesh. So I believe that the Lord is with the Father again, the Holy Spirit, all three is one, living in the third temple, the physical flesh, and he's been giving us clues and having us watch. Only the Father knows the day or the hour, but if Christ is also the Father, then... Back then, he didn't know the, the rapture, but, um, you know, it's, we, blessed are those who come to the Lord by faith. So, you know, if you're questioning salvation, you're questioning the Bible, you might have to even be questioning your own faith. So, either you, you believe, or, you know, you have faith, or you don't. <clears throat> But, you know, that brings me to the point. Uh, oh, by the way, it's 11:15. Uh, the, the eclipse is going to be happening in two minutes here. Um, the totality in, in uh, uh, Texas right now. So, yes, the Bible was written by sinners. Okay, Tyndale translated it. Okay, so the Lord uses everything. So, we, as humans, were made by God. Okay, so either the enemy can work through us or the Lord can work through us. So if the Lord works through us, he can bring miraculous events if we're faithful, just like Abraham. Okay, so uh, with that, he uses his faithful scribes to write revelatory things. And it's the Lord, the hands behind the hands, if you will. So the Lord is like, all right, no, I'm going to have you do this. So a lot of people, their inspiration is from evil spirits. Uh, or the enemy, or you can have the Holy Spirit, Shekinah, his Holy Spirit, having, leading and guiding you. So the Lord can have anything happen. So the Lord may have put some certain stuff, just like the Mandela effect is happening in the Bible. There's a lot of things are changing. It used to be Isaiah 11, the lion will lay down with the lamb. Now it's the wolf will dwell with the lamb. Uh, so it, it changed. So the enemy, um, it goes back to um, re the revelations, the famine of the word, the black horse. Okay, so, you know, uh, there would be a famine of the word. Um, a day's wage will only buy a, a loaf of bread or five loaves of barley bread and spare the oil and the wine. And so it might be also a famine, a physical famine, like the mark of the beast, you know, you won't be able to buy or sell or have a job unless you get it. And uh, the people will starve, you know, without it, who haven't accepted the Lord. Um, but a famine of the word also, the Lord brings confusion and, and stuff and doesn't give revelation and deliverance to people whose hearts aren't right until they repent. And so a lot of people that are walking around the world blind, they believe in a whole bunch of lies until the Lord delivers them. And then they have to have more faith. And then the Lord uses different people for his purposes at his time, um, just like MLK. 
So MLK Jr., he used him at that time for the Reformation movement against the uh, papacy, against the Catholic idol worship. And what happened? He was a uh, head wound, just like um, Abraham Lincoln. A lot of people don't know that Abraham Lincoln was a Christian. Okay, so Abraham Lincoln, he was, John Wilkes Booth was a Freemason, and he actually shot him in the head in a theater. A theater just like the theater of all the lies of the world that's being conducted by the false... Um, actor, the false director, the evil one, while the Lord is trying to bring forth his salvation, and it will be as the Lord has says in you know, the Bible. All these different revelations in the Bible have happened, and they did prophetically happen. So if the Bible was written by sinners, and everyone's a sinner in need of saving, then how could you trust anything? So... Oh, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. So Harry Potter were made of, formed of clay, like the Harry Potter. Harry Potter had a mark on his forehead, just like a, um, a lightning bolt, okay, uh, with the wands, like trees, like um, Jacob and Laban. Jacob put different trees in to have to do his breeding program with the sheep and the goats, um, the speckled and spotted, you know, animals. Uh, but I believe it was C.S. Lewis. Okay, C.S. Lewis was a um, wrote a book... Uh, a series called Mere Christianity, and a lot of the stuff was revelatory, so he used him, but C.S. Lewis also used, made um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, okay? So, the enemy can use people for evil, but the Lord can use people for good, so you have to have Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to be able to separate it. So, the Lord separated the evil words, like all the other books, Okay, all the other books not filled with revelation, not filled with life. Uh, and then he used the Bible as his tool for salvation for people. And, um, you know, who am I to judge God? Who am I to say, you know, it was made by sinners, you know? Uh, all of us were sinners, so the Lord uses who he, how he pleases. So I actually put some uh, videos about um, C.S. Lewis. He actually did some things about mere Christianity and spiritual warfare and stuff like that. And it was talking about how these different spirits try to trip people up in their walk of life as they went. And so they were talking about somebody, uh, a scenario where somebody went in to get a, like a sandwich or something. And they were tr <clears throat> the evil spirits were trying to lead to somebody to go get a sandwich. And then it led them to go to talk with someone about like belief systems. And then they were trying to mislead this person with lies by having... So they... Uh, the evil spirits tried to mislead and misguide us with day-to-day -day activities trying to bring us to people who will uh, be a detriment to our faith and lead us into lies, but the Lord is trying to lead us into truth uh, through our walk of life. So there's knowledge and wisdom and, you know, discernment. So a lot of people... Um, the evil one uses a whole bunch of scripture... But he litters it with lies. Like, the enemy was very subtle when uh, tempting Jesus. And he said, well, if you're the son of God, turn this rock into a loaf of bread. And um, we don't live by bread alone, but, every, but by every word that the Lord says from his mouth. And so, um, it's like, you don't test the Lord your God. Um, you know, the enemy told Eve... Uh, you won't die, you'll be like God, but she wouldn't die at the second that she ate the fruit, but later on it would lead to her death. So at the moment of sin, it led to death, and then so Christ died to bring us back to life, back to his truth. Kind of reminds me, yeah, the, the Lord could make uh, uh, a Bible, literally a book out of dirt. The, the Lord literally made the Ten Commandments first. So the Ten Commandments were written on, um, so Mount Sinai, his mountain, was uh, made with a lot of aluminum. And aluminum 
actually is what makes sapphire. And so when the Lord came down his feet, he walked on the high amounts of aluminum and actually it, it said he was walking on what looked like the sky, like light blue. Um, so aluminum turns into sapphires. So his thrones, God, God's throne room is made out of sapphire. And um, so he could literally like make a, a book out of nothing. Uh, but the, the Lord, you know, has, you know, continuity kind of thing. Um, kind of reminds me of, uh, what was it? Um, the, the Mormons, the Book of Mormon. So the founder of Mormonism said that he found a book written by gold, in, on, on gold, and that that's how, where he got his inspiration from, for the Book of Mormon. So a lot of people, they're like, hey, you know, where did that come from? And so they took away his his um, books and they said, all right, recreate it. But he wasn't able to. So he basically was lying that he had some revelatory, you know, Bible angel gold book, you know. But the you know, Lord uh, leads people and, you know, has prophecy. And so either the prophecy doesn't happen or it does happen. Almost every single word in the Bible, all the prophecy has happened. So you just have to accept it by faith. And, you know, it might seem like, oh, that's a shortcut kind of thing. Like, oh, just accept it kind of thing. Like, uh, but you have to have faith. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, the eclipse is still happening. Um, <clears throat> the eclipse might actually be a prophetic sign of getting ready for the eclipse. So uh, when Noah went into the ark, the, he mourned for seven days before the water, the floods started coming up. First nuclear in uh, Ost after rapture. I, I remember you, Jesus, my life nine. I believe you. Um, you're of a different um, uh, uh, different uh, language. Um, uh, could you provide more clarity on that? Nuclear reminds me of like nuclear, uh, like detonation, like uh, nuclear superpowers. But I pray against the evil one working in Travis's heart. Uh, the Lord rebuke you. Um, the enemy tries to come up into people's hearts and they try to like make you question things. Like Peter, he actually came up, and um, Peter was like, "No, you're not. You're not you're never going to die." Well, the Lord said, "No, I have to die in order to bring salvation. If I don't die, people won't be saved." So uh, the the Lord said, "The Lord rebuke you, Satan." Uh, who when they came up to speak through Peter. So Peter literally, you know, was an apostle, uh, just as Judas was an apostle, okay? But the enemy started working through Judas, and then it bring forth prophecy. <clears throat> Sizzle iguana. I buried all my money and I can't find it. It reminds me of X marks the spot, like, um, the, uh, like, a, in the, riding in the sand, like Christ, riding the, the names of the Sanhedrin in the sand when, uh, you know, the, the adulterous woman was brought up to them, and they're like, you know, you know, the first person to who hasn't sinned can throw the first stone, but all of them had sinned, so they couldn't for, throw the first stone. So Christ was the only one who was worthy. So Christ works through his people to um, provide revelation to write the Bible. So that's what happened, just like Holy Spirit Pentecost, they were able to speak in different languages. So we see not the Antichrist. 
Well, not right this second. The Antichrist has to receive the head wound, and then they will take his place uh, in the, the third physical temple. Um, so we're just waiting on, you know, the Lord um, for Revelation to happen the way the Lord wants, and it will happen the way the Lord wants as um, Revelation entails. Kind of reminds me of this nuclear right here. Um, you know, going nuclear clear kind of being mad if you will um a lot of people like you know when the bomb when you know the the atomic you know bombs go up um or try, start to come down we go up kind of thing well the whole world isn't going to be you know nucleared you know uh it might be part of the great tribulation there might be some you know the the, the sky is darkened and everything like that and then people get boils and sores on their their arms maybe you'll be like after a nuclear apocalypse but that's just supposition i'm not sure um but it seems as if the Antichrist um, prophetically might be uh, one of the um, the prophetic horns, and then they'll take his seat. So Abaddon, Abaddon, like they're literally trying to take the seat in the physical, you know, flesh. You know, with the pokey pokies and the bows and the arrows and the corona, you know, the crown. Um, so they're trying to you know, take their seat in the physical body of Christ. Um, and then they're going to try and take the physical seat in the physical world, spiritually. So spiritual and then physical. Nine. Hmm. Number nine. Your nine actually reminds me of uh, Wahrheit of Alles. Nine. Like, no. So, known nine. Um, Deutschland. Like, um, Deutschland über alles. Like, Deutschland above all it reminds me of that so nine might be actually no like uh, yes or no black or white um, you know accepting the Lord or not and I, I believe uh, Jesus my life you are German Deutschland Tagoder Monat Nun The Lord remembers. <laughs> uh, Der est Wagner Onden. Hmm. You know what's interesting? is I'm actually, they say that I was part Native American and part German. Um, so yeah, instead of saying Deutschland of alles, I say Wahrheit of alles. So the truth above all um, kind of reminds me of Normandy, um, the beaches of Normandy when they, they came and you know, fought against the Germans and um, you know, Germany surrendered with the Nuremberg trials. Um, and what's interesting is with Purim, there was Haman and his 10 sons, and then he had one daughter. Uh, but in the Nuremberg trials, there were 11 people. And then one of them committed suicide, who was a cross-dresser, just like Haman's daughter. And then Haman's 10 sons, they were actually hung. And then the last one came, um, I forget his name, but he said Purim Vest. So uh, the Feast of Purim. Uh, so it kind of um, ties to that with the Holocaust and the Jews who were not being faithful. And then the Lord uh, literally ha rose Germany up, allowed Germany to be sinful, to go against the Jews who weren't accepting Christ, to bring forth judgment. And then the Lord judged the G Germans, and then the Germans were judged. So he kills two birds with one stone. And so the Lord wants to bless people, and so... You know, he brings those who are faithful in him through, just like when um, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah happened, they were fleeing, and Lot's wife turned around, and she turned it into a pillar, a pillar of salt. So what does that represent, a pillar of salt? So she, Christ says, if salt loses its flavor, it will be crushed underneath. So if it's crushed underneath, Lot, Lot's wife turned back and she turned to a pillar of salt. So her life, literally her salt, lost its flavor and she turned into a pillar of salt. And a lot of people 
in Jerusalem, they say, oh, well, this, this rock formation is the pillar of salt. Well, salt literally dissolves in water. She, she's literally dissolved into the water like the ocean. So the ocean, like the papacy, okay, the ocean is filled with salt, salt water. It's not pure living waters of giving life, just like the pool of Siloam. So the pool of Siloam, Christ said, come to me and drink. I have the living waters. And she was like, oh, well, you know, where can I get these living waters where I'll never have to fetch water again? And he told her um, uh, that her entire life. <clears throat> And he said, yes, you have had many husbands. And she ran back to the city. She's like, oh, this is Messiah, right? So Salome, the, the, the pool of Salome, okay, the well, reminds me of either the blessing or the curse. So you have the, the pool of Salome with Christ, uh, or you can have um, uh, Salome who danced uh, in front of Herodias and took John the Baptist's head off because he pleased her and he said he would give her anything she wanted and her mom said hey I want John the Baptist's head on a platter so either you can you know accept the world and you know be full of lust or you can um you know accept Christ's living water so there's the pool of Salome and then Salome who did the lap dance that's why you get strippers okay the covering cherub Adam and Eve literally um, they ate the fruit, and then they realized they were naked. They covered their genitals with fig leaves, which represent later on the fig tree, the, the fig tree generation with Israel. Um, and, and the figs kind of look like um, a male uh, reproductive area, uh, like, you know, figs dropping, you know. Um, but uh, so you can be covered with sin. Uh, so they literally, the Lord killed uh, an animal, and covered their skin with, you know, the, the animals, so they, he made clothes out of leather. I believe the leather was made out of cow, cowhide. So he took the cows and made cowhide in Adam and Eve, you know, in the Garden of Eden. They were covered with the cowhide. Later on, Israel, with the fig leaves, they would worship a golden bull calf. And then later on, uh, you'd have the red heifer sacrifice, um, signifying the third temple, the, thir the physical third temple. <clears throat> the Russia has come in the seven years Germany, several times, terrible time. October 8th, Trump. The October reminds me of fall, like the fall feasts, like the fall uh, supposed, like fall tabernacles, like tabernacling with the Lord and Yom Kippur. Um, the, the, the very last and great and final day is Yom Kippur with October. Um, October reminds me of octagon, so like eight sides, like an octopus, like the hydra. Uh, like uh, with um, uh, Germany, with um, where they were saying Hail Hydra, um, and like uh, Marvel and uh, Endgame, and um, with Captain America, uh, reminds me of that. October eighth, the eight sides. October eighty eight. So eight sides and eight sides. October eighty eight. So eighty eight is Jesus Christ. And twenty twenty three. I remember there was a the eclipse in 2023, uh, May, May 2021. It's like May Day, like uh, the beaches in Normandy, like going against uh, uh, Deutschland, German. <clears throat> Now, what's interesting is, uh, you know, being a, like a covering cherub, like the enemy is a covering cherub, the, they have, um, you know, acting and stuff like that with the movies. They have those, the claps. They have the, the thing that has a black and white. It kind of reminds me of T. 
teeth. Okay, so snap, snap, like Christ, you know, with the trump of God and you know, come up here kind of thing. Um, but acting is literally saying lies out of your teeth. And, you know, the black and white, like white, dark, white, dark, like... Um, like a, a gap in the teeth, if you will, like the, the Christ died on the cross, you know, and then the Holy of Holies, the veil tore. So, you know, a gap in the teeth, like losing teeth, if you will. So children, they have their baby teeth and then they have gaps in their teeth and then it's filled in with the adult teeth. And unless you take care of your adult teeth, they, um, they'll rot away. Uh, so they have Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. And Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, you know, eating a whole bunch of candy, you know, the, your teeth rots because, you, know, you know, you're feeding the, the whatever bacteria that, you know, eats the enzymes in your teeth. So if you don't, you know, eat the right foods, you, you know, too much, uh, too much candy, um, you'll have a whole bunch of plaque and it'll eat away your teeth, uh, you know, if you're not being healthy and, you know, being with the Lord. <clears throat> And Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory reminds me of when they're on the boat. And so the boat went through the Chocolate River. And the Chocolate River reminds me of I Pet Go 2 with Antichrist on the boat going through the river. And the fish, and then he comes out, you know, the birth canal um, through the, the, the earthquake and the, uh, the shaky eyes, you know, the uh, Statue of Liberty. Um, and also... In the end of I Pet Go to it shows the Egypt. And Egypt literally has the sun behind it and there's rocks coming down and it literally demolishes um, Egypt. So the end of I Pet Go to the eclipse goes over Little Egypt, Illinois, and it's just like um, the New Age, the Egypt, like Obama Akhenaten. Okay, so you have Akhenaten and then you have the, the man of sin, uh, who, you know, Satan and the man of sin. Uh, Satan's kid. Um, so the sun destroys the, the the pyramids, like the Tower of Babel was destroyed, like uh, America, Mystery of Babylon falling. But I don't believe that America is literally the Mystery of Babylon. I believe they're part of Mystery of Babylon. I believe the papacy, like uh, Italy, um, it says that Mystery of Babylon is decked in gold and pearls and uh, red and scarlet and the people going in mass in um the vatican they wear purple gold and scarlet and they have all this gold and stuff um so i believe that's uh indicative of uh the boot okay so italy looks like a boot like there's a snake in my boot okay it looks like a you know these boots were made for walking like uh texas okay so the eclipse going over texas and um it, it's all you know, synchron synchronicity, you know, it's all synchronized. You have the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness trying to synchronize their own manifestations. Uh, but the kingdom of darkness will not prevail. And the Lord's truth will. And all things will happen the way the Lord wants. Well, I do believe I'm going to start going. Um, so I'm going to bring this uh, live session to uh, an end. Uh, I pray for all my brothers and sisters and any and all um, people who have been watching. Uh, I pray for the Lord's will in your life and the Lord's will be done on earth as is in heaven. I pray against all evil spirits, demons, and curses in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And I pray that, you know, this will edify the body of Christ. Um, I pray that you have a, a holy, good day. Um, uh, instead of just good or bad without Christ, I pray for salvation. I pray for revelation. I pray, um, yes, yes to the Lord and no to the kingdom of darkness. All right, amen, God bless, and take care.